The 2025 Lexus UX gets an entirely new powertrain here and a new hybrid system for 2025 to go along with its new name of the UX 300H. Gone is the 250 we had previously, and now we have this new 300. And so in this video, I'm gonna cover the exterior, the interior, take it for a drive, see what it's like to drive, talk about the fuel economy you can expect, as well as the pricing and how it compares to the competition. So as far as the styling here on the 2025 UX, there's nothing new aside from this copper crest color, which you can now get for 2025, which looks fantastic, has some really nice metallic flake in it, and I think is probably my favorite color of the bunch here for 2025. Other than that though, it's all the same, and it's a still a really nice look. You have the painted fenders here on these upper trims. This is a premium trim we have here. You can also get a sportier look with the F Sport and the F Sport handling versions. And if you want something with a more rugged look, you can get some black cladding here instead. That's a little more rugged looking. That's on the lower trim instead. But otherwise, you know, you have nice 18 inch wheels. You have my favorite touch here of the UX that they've had for the entire generation. And that is the little blade you have built into the taillights there. Almost reminds me of uh, little fins on like cars from the 50s and stuff. And uh, just a really nice look though, I think from every angle, I think it's aged very well. So they didn't really need to mess with the styling. I think it still looks great, but they did give it some nice improvements on the interior. So let's check that out. The 2025 UX interior is also really nice and updated here. So in 2023, it got this nice big touchscreen, which you can get on basically everything except the base trim. And it's really nice you have that. You also have the newest version of the Lexus digital driver display here, digital gauges. And and uh, all the other stuff on the inside here is nice, but it's tight and it's pretty small in here. Um, so I'll get into that here in this video a little bit. But uh, first thing, sitting down in these seats. That is one standout feature is these seats are so soft and comfortable. I love these seats. They are just like so perfectly contoured, at least for my body type. Definitely sit in it and check it out for yourself. But to me, they are basically perfect seats for a luxury little crossover like this. So soft and just so supportive at the same time. They're also heated and ventilated and everything from premium and above. And so, and they actually do something too. These are ventilated seats that get you nice and cold. And that's something that a lot of the others can't master. So really well done seats. And a lot of the others don't even offer ventilated seats, but I love that they also have lumbar adjustment here. Now the premium doesn't have memory settings, but you do get memory on the higher trims. And uh, so this is kind of a nice look at a mid-grade trim here, but it's still very, very nicely equipped. The steering wheel is also fantastic. And just for a simple $250 cold weather package, it's a heated steering wheel as well. And has a nice nine and three grip, little 10 and two notches, just a few buttons on it, and a really great wheel. The gauges though are this beautiful 12.3 inch display that's pretty highly customizable. You can have a little map in the middle there, different themes, different things on the right and the left, and pretty easy to you know tweak all that stuff. Pretty simple and straightforward though. It doesn't seem overly complicated or confusing. And this display is standard on everything from premium and above as well. The standard display is gonna be a seven inch driver information display, which is also still fine. It still gives you uh, basically everything that this does functionality wise, just you have uh, non-digital parts there on the right and on the left for fuel and coolant, but there's still little lights. So it still looks mostly the same. So not a big downgrade if you don't wanna go for a higher trim. But also here, this one has the option for this head up display, which is $900. Head up display are nice. You know, this one will show you your lane keep and driver assistance stuff as well as your speed. But, you know, they don't really work great with polarized sunglasses still. And to me, it's not a big deal. So, uh, especially in a vehicle like this, it's lower priced. I'd probably skip the $900 upcharge on that. But, you know, nice they offer that. Also, when you're looking up top here, you will see that you have this new texture here, which I believe is new for 2025. Um, and it's a really cool look. And it you know, looks higher end without being super flashy or anything. And just really nicely done. I still also love these little controllers for your uh, sport mode and the trash control. That's a remnant from the prior generation Lexus design on the inside and I just always like that. But anyway, coming over to the middle here, you have this 12.3 inch touchscreen here as an option on this premium. Otherwise, you're going to get an 8 inch touchscreen as standard, which is still fine. Still has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto either way. Still has the option for navigation either way, all those types of things. This just gives you more real estate basically and it's a really nice, beautiful high resolution screen. And again, having that wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto is great. It worked flawlessly all week, which is something you can't say about many other applications and other vehicles. So a really well done, stable version of that 
that as well. And all the other, you know, Lexus uh, menus and stuff are pretty simple. It mostly just defers to CarPlay, which makes a lot of sense since that's what everyone wants to use. Uh, but everything else is really nice and easy as far as, you know, going through radio stations, things like that, if you want to, you know, do some non-CarPlay uh, or Android Auto stuff as well. Coming down, you also have your little row of climate controls here, which are nice and simple, but feel good. And uh, then you also have this optional wireless charging pad for $75 on this one. And there's like no rubberized uh, surface, really. There's no brackets or anything to hold it in place. So that's going to be pretty useless, most likely, whenever you're actually moving uh, to, with charging your phone. So I'd skip that. You also have your two cup holders. And uh, you also have a shift by wire now in the UX, which is a new addition here. And you also have uh, the center armrest, which is you know a little bit padded and feels fairly nice and opens both from the driver's side and also on the passenger side, which is really cool. And a decent amount of space for a vehicle of this size and another USB-A, the only USB-A jack in this vehicle, as well as a regular power outlet. You also do have pockets in the doors down here with a smaller bottle holder, but still has one nonetheless. The back seat space, though, in the UX is pretty small, and this is where this vehicle's basis, which is, you know, largely based on a Toyota Corolla, uh, that's where you're going to have, you know, that uh, concession there. And I'd say most of the competitors probably are going to have a roomier back seat than this. I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself. I do fit. It's a narrow opening for the door, I will add, but I do fit in there, and I have about an inch of legroom to spare. So, I mean, I actually fit without, you know, feeling like I'm super crammed. Headroom is also decent. There's a nice cutout there uh, to give you some good headroom. And they do also even have a full down center armrest with cup holders there, but there's no pockets on the doors. They do have their own air vents though, so that's another nice thing, as well as two more USB-C jacks. Um, so it's really gonna come down to your usage case. Like for example, we have a four-facing toddler seat here in this. And so, you know, I mean, it fits back there, but it means that the front passenger, my wife basically had her knees uh, crammed up against the uh, dashboard there. And me even being 5'9", again, sitting in that seat, you know, I'm more close to the dashboard than I would like to be, you know, for a comfortable seating position. And my knees are basically right up against the dash too. So, you know, I wouldn't use this as an everyday family vehicle if you have a, you know, a large forward facing car seat there but it can work in a pinch and uh, you know, I mean, it's a small vehicle. There's no surprises here, but again, that's another area where most of the competitors, which are slightly larger, um, you know, are gonna give you probably a more livable situation than this does. But moving on to the trunk, that is, I think the worst part of this interior, it is pretty small. Uh, if you want a flat load floor, then that floor is even higher up, but you know, I have it dropped to that lower setting there. But I mean, still you have uh, those little pockets strange. They, I don't know why they had to package it that way. I'm guessing there's something, you know, under um, all the sheet metal and stuff that requires that but you know you have like the battery in the back there so that's covered but then otherwise you have these various little bins that are mostly useless and then just a very narrow uh, space there and not much under the floor either so uh, just not super practical. And again, that's a problem that's shared with the Corolla hatchback, which is a really small hatch uh, compared to its competitors. So, you know, that's another area where a lot of the competitors that have larger SUV dimensions, larger hatches are going to just destroy this as far as cargo space goes. So not gonna be the one to pick if you want cargo space or rear seat space. If those two things aren't priorities for you though, this interior is still, like I said, really nice, really plush, a really nice place to be as long as you're up front and don't have anyone in the back really. But let's start up and go for a drive. The UX here still has the good old tried and true Lexus key they've used for a long time, but it's still a very nice key. And of course it is keyless access, keyless entry and push button starts. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the power button and it turns right on. And of course, since they're all hybrid now, um, you know, you're just gonna hear everything boot up here, but a lot of times the engine doesn't turn on. All right, so setting off here in the UX300H. So the first thing you notice about this vehicle, well, I think, you know, even though it is, again, a smaller vehicle, you have really good visibility. You have a nice view forward, nice thin A-pillar, actually. Mirrors off onto the door. You have a little window there at the A-pillar. Really good as far as that goes. You also have a really good view out of the back, you know, typical hatch kind of shape. I mean, it's not a large window, but totally fine visibility. Other things here, so right now we have the gas engine on because we've been running the battery down here uh, to film this interior, so it's funny to charge that up. But otherwise, you know, normally at low speeds like this, it's gonna just turn the engine off and you'll be coasting silently and uh, you know it's just a really smooth operating vehicle it's you know got a CVT transmission it's a planetary thing not really a actual transmission honestly but you know it's super smooth so there's no shifting or anything and this hybrid you know since it has those electric motors it's gonna give you that instant punch you need not a ton of punch this isn't a fast vehicle but it gives you punch and it gives you the instant response you're looking for so you know throttle response is instant uh, even whenever you have the gas engine working 
working as well. It's all very responsive. That's one thing that's really great about this Toyota new hybrid system, which is, by the way, the new fifth gen system that debuted in the Prius. We see it now in the Corolla Cross, and now it's showing up here in the UX, first application for Lexus here. And so this uh, you know system is just really efficient, but really punchy and really powerful too. It's a nice little improvement in power over what the UX used to get, which is also why they felt it was warranted to bump it from the UX 250 to the UX 300 now. But even, you know, like climbing a hill with the gas engine on, this is the most unrefined it's gonna be, and it's pretty quiet and fairly refined, you know, and for this segment, I have no complaints with that. Steering also is nice and light, nice and easy to use, and it doesn't feel overly sporty or anything. There is, again, the F-Sport version and also the F-Sport handling version, and that one, by the way, only gives you adaptive dampers. That's the only actual handling improvement for that. Otherwise, it's gonna be all the same stuff here as any other UX, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it up into the sport driving mode here, and let's turn down onto this back road and see how it accelerates. And here we go. All right. And you know, we're up to some pretty quick speeds there already. So it's totally fine. It's totally fine. It's the best way I can put it is it's totally fine acceleration. So what it has here is a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine combined with two electric motors. This one is all wheel drive. So you have one electric motor in the back that does 40 horsepower and one in the front that can do 111 horsepower on its own. But the gas engine can also do 150 horsepower on its own. Unfortunately, they don't all work together to make the same peak power at the same time. So that's why peak horsepower is just 196 horsepower. But that's still a nice improvement over the 181 horsepower you used to have here in the uh, UX. And so it's gonna be a nice little uh, improvement in punch. And it's interesting because in stuff like the Prius, if you go for two wheel drive, you go down to 194 horsepower. But for this, they're quoting 196, whether you get front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Um, and uh, zero to 60 time, for anyone who's curious, is gonna be 7.9 seconds with all wheel drive, eight seconds with front wheel drive. And you know, again, this vehicle is not about straight line acceleration or performance. And that is one area where most of the competitors will give you a little more horsepower. None of them are super fast, but you know, they're all gonna have more power than this. So getting the UX is a conscious decision that you're focused on fuel economy and efficiency and comfort, and you're not worried about acceleration and power. So as long as you know you're in that mindset, you won't be disappointed here. I mean, you know, a sub eight seconds zero to 60 time is still quicker than the average vehicle on the road. That still will beat a Subaru Crosstrek or some average thing you see everywhere like that. And so, um, you know, still totally fine. And again, because that instant electric punch, it feels a little punchier than that at times, you know, with uh, the electric motor kicking in and just giving you that nice little shove uh, to go along with the gas engine. It all works together really smoothly, really, really well. And uh, yeah, I've always just been, you know, pretty impressed with the system over the past couple of years here that I've experienced it and it just works really well here. Now, you know, as far as the fuel economy, that is the one, you know, big advantage of this new generation motor is it gets uh, two MPG better for the all-wheel drive version and one MPG better for the front-wheel drive version than the prior uh, version of this, you know, the UX250, even though this has more power and it also has more efficiency. It's awesome how engineers are able to, you know, give you <laughs> the best of both worlds and, you know, somehow manage to make it more powerful and more efficient. It's awesome. So, um, you know, these are rated at 41 MPG in the city, 45 on the highway, and 43 combined if you go for front wheel drive. You lose just one MPG going for all wheel drive in each of those metrics. And I gotta say that uh, I was pretty impressed. So during my driving this week, I've put 132 miles on it here so far. Um, and a lot of that was, you know, around town city suburban stuff where hybrid is more beneficial, but it wasn't stop and go city driving where, you know, you would have the most uh, efficiency with a hybrid here. But regardless, you know, I did a decent amount of highway driving too, but I'm still getting 45 MPG. And, you know, typically I get like one to two MPG less than the city rating or whatever rating is the worst, which in this one, you know, um, would be that highway rating of 41. So I was thinking I'd get like, you know, maybe 39 or something is what I was hoping for. Then to be getting 45 in this, and that was also carrying around the family. So three people loaded up in here and, uh, you know, I'm not trying to hypermile by any means, just doing my thing, driving normally, and uh, it's doing 45 MPG and a little luxury crossover. I mean, you know, while the others might destroy this as far as cargo space or rear seat space or power, this destroys all of them with fuel economy. No one else even offers a hybrid period in this segment. And, uh, you know, again, none of them can even touch 
this fuel economy, not even close. I think you'd be lucky to crack into the 30s in most of the other competitors. Um, so to be at 45, not even trying, and this is all wheel drive too, is really impressive. Uh, but anyway, we're cutting up some corners here that I always take. Let's see how the UX300 handles. We only have 18 inch wheels on these 225 wide all season tires. So I'm not expecting much, but it actually is pretty nice. So one cool thing is if you do kind of apply the gas through a corner even slightly, you can feel what they have. It's like an active quartering assist, they call it. It's essentially like a torque vectoring thing where it will you know, try to you know, tuck the um, inside rear wheel a little bit and give you a nice acceleration coming out. And it does work. I can feel it working. And it's one of the more apparent versions of torque vectoring that I've come across in recent memory where it, it helps you through the corner and you can feel that and that intelligence there that it has. It's an extra little edge that you might not be expecting that it's able to be like, oh wow, like it's going around this corner better than I thought it would. Um, so, I mean, it handles itself really, really well for what it is. And, you know, that's part of the benefit of this being based on, again, a Corolla and a smaller hatchback, really more so than a taller, boxier SUV like some of the others, you know, try to do is that, you know, you have slightly better handling here. And again, we are in the non-sporty version. I'm sure you'd have, you know, unique damper tuning and all that for the F-Sport versions and the F-Sport handling in particular with those adaptive dampers. If you do want to have a sportier UX for whatever reason, you know, that's going to be the way to go, I guess. But you know, for the average person who's looking for a comfy, very fuel efficient, but still nice and luxurious, high tech little commuter vehicle uh, to you know run all your errands in and stuff, this is going to be fantastic. And the great thing about the Lexus too is you know having these Toyota powertrains means these are going to be bulletproof, solid, reliable. And so while all the other you know German competitors and stuff could get a little wonky down the road and be problematic and stuff, this thing should be good for hundreds of thousands of miles, no problem if you take care of it and uh, you know be really i think the, the more solid choice for someone who's in a buy and keep kind of mindset and not just flipping cars every few years you also have a double wishbone rear suspension here in the ux so that gives you some extra poise as well and the fact these only weigh 3575 pounds at their heaviest here for one of the fully loaded ones and uh, i mean so that's a nice lightweight in a you know, time where most vehicles are over 4,000 pounds it seems especially in the luxury segment um, and the fact this is so nice and light is going to also help with your handling and just make this whole thing feel a little more agile and playful and just easier to manage. And you know, these roads are also a little bit on the noisy side and you hear some of the road noise, I'm sure on camera here, it might even amplify it a little bit more, but it's really actually not too noisy in here. And I'd say as far as that goes, it's pretty in line with most of the others uh, in this segment that I've experienced and you know, it's totally fine, I'd say. I mean, every once in a while on some of those harsher segments, it can sound a little loud, but to me, it's totally fine. Again, you got this smooth, comfortable ride. You got the nice, luxurious, you know, ride quality. It soaks up bumps really well, and you also have this stereo, which I didn't even mention in the interior segment because this isn't an upgraded stereo since I'm just in a premium trim here. Just an ordinary, you know, base stereo setup here for Lexus, but it sounds really clear and crisp. And once you have that going, you're not going to really hear any of the road noise much either. And so it's going to give you just a really nice driving experience. And uh, in sport mode here, you know, you have the quicker throttle response and all that but we even just go back into the normal mode and even in normal mode all this week i've been really impressed with just how responsive it is and um you know i mean you can feel the nose like lift up whenever you get onto the gas even like half throttle it you know really gets going and uh you know again for me totally fine i mean i love performance i'm an enthusiast i like going fast but this i was like totally fine with this this week it's a really great little family vehicle it's a really great little you know run around thing for your errands and all that one other change about this whole powertrain is that this vehicle now runs a lithium ion battery pack instead of the nickel metal hydride battery it used to run for most people that's all greek to them doesn't make any difference uh, but just bottom line you know, it's a newer kind of battery technology um, it's going to be a little bit more power dense and uh, they're able to fit the battery just underneath the rear seat there so there is no compromise from that as far as uh, the rear cargo area goes and now we're out on the highway here in the ux and that's another area where it nicely beats all the competitors is with these standard safety tech you get you get lexus safety suite plus 3.0 i believe is what it's called and it basically just gives you everything as standard you have adaptive cruise control as standard with lane keep assist uh, lane centering all that stuff it also even does the auto braking um, through intersections and stuff on the left hand side if it detects you know a car coming into your path which is all this active safety stuff 
that most of the others make you pay extra for, but even many of the others still make you pay extra for even adaptive cruise control and a variety of other things. Um, and even like, you know, uh, blind spot monitoring, you know, all that stuff, all the basic stuff, automatic emergency braking, rear cross traffic alerts, all those things are standard. Everything is standard. There is no safety equipment option on the UX, at least that I saw, at least on the premium versions here. So, I mean, it is just so great that you don't have to worry about that and you don't have to pay extra like you do for many of the others. And that's one of the areas where, you know, this actually undercuts most of the competitors because once you add on comparable equipment to this, they're going to get a lot more expensive than this one. And so now like we're going around this gentle corner here and it's doing a really good job here with uh, giving me some steering assist. I basically just hovering my hands on the wheel and it negotiated that turn no problem. And that's something that's not always a guarantee. There's still other systems out there these days that struggle with lane keep that drive like a drunk driver and they're all over the road and stuff some even cross lines this is you know solid assertive assistance your experience may vary but even on these challenging highways here in southwestern pennsylvania with court with you know these yd turns and all that it's doing a really good job here but the last thing to mention here is the pricing and how it compares to the competition so as far as pricing goes these start around thirty seven and a half thousand dollars this one as tested is about forty five and a half thousand dollars and a fully loaded version of one of these is going to cost you about forty nine thousand dollars or so so i mean as far as that pricing goes for some, it's it's close. So, uh, I mean, I think first off, the pricing is really good just because, again, no one else offers a hybrid in this segment. So you're getting one of the lowest priced vehicles in this segment that also is going to save you a bunch of money on gas and everything. And so that's going to make this, you know, one of the more appealing options as well. But, I mean, the only one that even gets close to this as far as pricing is the Audi Q3, which still is even going to, you know, miss out on some of the features that this has at that, you know, $45,000 price point comparably equipped to this, you know, those are going to be still probably a couple grand more. And, uh, you know, I mean, again, the big deal with all the competitors is that they give you more power, a little more space, and, uh, you know, are just going to give you a little bit more of a traditional SUV kind of vibe versus this still kind of having hatchbacky kind of vibes to it. Um, you know, some of them do have a boxier look. The Q3 is one of them. The uh, BMW X1 is another one that's going to give you a little bit more power, a little bit more space, but that's also going to, again, be almost almost $50,000, I think they're about $49,000 comparably equipped, so you're gonna pay another four grand extra over this and you have higher fuel costs. And then whenever you talk about like the Mercedes and the Volvo, um, you know, with the GLA and the XC40, those are all gonna be over $50,000 comparably equipped to just this mid-grade version of this. If you wanna add on the sporty stuff to those and all that, it's gonna be even more. And so, you know, just no matter how you look at it, this is just the wisest choice from a value standpoint I think and then again just the excellent fuel economy you know is going to be great as well it just comes down to you know are you okay with 196 horsepower or do you want over 200 like most of those competitors give you the one other wild card I'll mention very briefly is that if you do want more power and you want still a luxurious experience but you're okay not getting a luxury brand the Mazda CX-30 turbo you can get for about thirty eight and a half thousand dollars that gives you all the same amenities that this has basically and that gives you two 250 horsepower, 320 pound-feet of torque, and a similarly tight interior, but one that is also still very luxurious and very nice. Honestly, pretty close in uh, niceties to this as far as materials and all that. So if you're looking for a real bargain and you want to do even better than this, I'd say that that is going to be the ticket, but that also doesn't offer a hybrid either. So you're still going to be getting, you know, mid-20s fuel economy most likely in that as well. So this still even trumps that if that is uh, something that, you know, you're looking for is that good fuel economy. And speaking of that good fuel economy, me. The one last thing before I go, the little bit more driving I've been doing here throughout the course of this review, the fuel economy has since climbed. Now we're doing almost 46 mpg now, so we've climbed even more. Even doing the acceleration test, even doing the highway driving, all these things that are supposed to be bad for hybrids, and I'm still getting continuing to climb here with fuel economy. And I haven't even burned through a half tank of gas yet. You know, I still have 239 miles of range after 145 miles of driving. So um, you know, I just <laughs> it's just really impressive the kind of fuel economy this thing's pulling off while still having sufficient punch, sufficient luxury, you know, and more than sufficient luxury, all for, you know, such a good price. So yeah, as long as you can deal with this smaller interior, the smaller size of this vehicle, absolutely I recommend the UX300 here. It is a really nice little vehicle and uh, just makes a ton of sense. So anyway, that's all of my thoughts here on the UX. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Huge thanks to Lexus for providing me here with this vehicle to review for you guys today. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.